Welcome back again, friends. Good to have you. Let's open, as always, with an invocation to the lineage of gurus. Divine Mother, Heavenly Father, dearest friend, beloved God, great masters of Kriya Yoga, Jesus Christ, Babaji Krishna, Lahiri Maharshi, Swami Sri Yukteswar, beloved Guru Paramhansa Yoganandaji, great saints and sages of all traditions, I humbly and lovingly bow before you and welcome you into this meditation. Attune us to your consciousness. Help us to go deep in meditation with your assistance tonight. Divine Mother, awaken your love in me. Then teach me to awaken that love in all. Om Shanti Shanti. Peace. Amen. So I'm very grateful to have friends to meditate with. This group is really a manifestation of a deep desire or aspiration. And so it's really great to have friends to be able to gather with where we come together with the sole purpose of helping each other to wake up from the dream. And having this really specific purpose, gathering together once a week, is a very powerful, very powerful practice. And so it's great to have all those joining us online as well through YouTube. And perhaps you can think about, I mean, here in the pandemic, we have small groups of uh, spiritual family or family that you get together with. Perhaps you can weekly make it a point to meditate together. Or you can use these videos to gather with friends across distances and meet up at the same time. It's very valuable to be able to do these uh, practices together. Again, this week I want to continue talking about or meditating on this idea of fully feeling all that is. So often we run away from the feelings that we feel within us. I remember uh, Many years ago, or for many years, I've been hearing spiritual teachers talk about this idea that we don't need to wait for a distant time in the future where we're going to decide to be happy or that we'll allow ourselves to be happy. We can be happy and free right now. And I always had trouble with that. You know, you see so many things in your life that you want to correct or you don't feel like you're there or you're in the middle of a lot of chaos or you don't, you're not finding peace in your life at the moment. So it always, to me, it seemed like a far-fetched idea or something that I didn't quite understand. But it's becoming more and more clear to me through persistent meditation that this goes beyond the intellectual idea that, like we practiced last week, we become open and receptive and welcoming of all that we feel, rather than looking for an escape. So tonight we can practice this. Whatever you're feeling right now, maybe your life is 
is in chaos. Maybe you are feeling fear. Maybe you are afraid of the world right now, or you are feeling like you're not the person that you know you are deep within yet, and you're imagining some distant moment in the future where you can be happy and free. But that's a trap. That's the trick. We can decide and become determined to be happy in each moment. And when difficult situations arise, we can create tools for ourselves to remember, to remind ourselves, oh, yeah, I'm feeling that this right now, this, this thing that I didn't want to happen is happening. Remember, pause, become calm. Yogananda made a really wonderful illustration of this idea. He said that the key to physical success, material success, success in this life, can think of it as a triangle. And on one side, triangle says sweetness. On the other side, it says calmness. And below it, it says happiness. And we decide to be sweet. We decide to be calm. We decide to be happy. And when we do these things, we attract goodness to us. We attract abundance to us. The things that we want, the things that we require in life are open to us. And we see our current situation in a new light. So tonight, let's practice feeling and not turning away. If you feel anxious and tense, go ahead and feel anxious and tense. Notice what that feels like inside your body. Turn your awareness inward, feeling inside. You feel a vibration there. What does anxiety feel like? What does fear feel like? What does doubt and insecurity feel like? Or if you're feeling joy, feel that. If you're feeling positivity, if you're feeling motivated, all of these feelings, welcome them. Allow them. You'll notice in meditation, if you can get to a point where you're allowing everything that is to be there, not imposing new words, new ideas into the mental space, practice that right now. Fully allow and feel within your body. Don't inject new language just for a moment. You'll realize there's no reason to think when we do this. We become open to allow everything that is. There's a wonderful track by a musician named East Forest called Grandmother Sphere. I'll put a link in the video notes where it's been really inspiring to me where he talks about allowing all that is to be there and that we become partners with our, our, our soul and our ego become partners. We're no longer pushing away. This life is a dream and we can become awake in the dream we're helping each other to become awake in the dream. As we become awake in the dream and we become present, then we become in tune with the dreamer. If you think about when you fall asleep and dream, there is a consciousness that exists beyond the body. When we get caught up in a dream, with desires and aversions. We're not awake in the dream. 
we're caught up in the dream, we're having nightmares, or we're having pleasure dreams, but we're not fully, we're not present, we don't fully experience this dream reality. But through lucid dreaming practice, you can actually learn to become awake inside the dream. And then you, your consciousness is alert and awake, and you can become a god in your dreams, changing the scenery. The same applies for life. This is, the dreamscape is a dream within a dream. This life that you're currently living, let's treat it as a dream. Let's become lucid right now. Feel the peace of the room that you're in. Become present and aware and awake inside this dream, attuning to the higher self who is creating this dream for you and become partners with that higher self, allowing this to become a beautiful dream. We need not be afraid and worried. The more that we become in tune to the higher self, the more in harmony and flow, the more we become in harmony with the song of our life. And we no longer need to worry and Abundance begins to come to us. So feel all that you are feeling in this meditation. We've used this practice of a double inhalation, tensing the body and vibrating with energy, and then we double exhale and relax. We can practice this right now of feeling. So when, when I say feeling all that is, it's a feeling inside. So the practice is a double inhalation. It sounds like this. Low, medium, high, vibrating with energy. Double exhale, relax. And then feeling, feel inwardly. This combination of tensing and then expanding allows us to feel the reason why we're upset and anxious and unhappy and Suffering in life is because we have a deep longing to expand. We are infinite expansion, expanded beings, and we are shipwrecked, as Yogananda says, inside, inside these bodies. So we naturally want to expand. So as we do this practice, when we double inhale and tense, and then we let go, feel. That's the feeling that I'm talking about. Feel all that is. And we'll also be using a method called Hong Sa, which is a powerful uh, technique for developing concentration. We mentally chant Hong on the inhalation, Sa on the exhalation. And also at some point, I'll guide us to use the right index finger, where you gently curl it toward you on the inhalation and then away from you on the exhalation. So let's begin with a prayer opening, asking for concentration. You can say this prayer inwardly. And repeating after me inside your mind. Teach me, O Spirit, by meditation, to stop the storm of breath, the skipping of my mental restlessness, and all of the sensory disturbances that rage on in the lake of my mind. Let the magic wand of my intuition Halt the gale of passions and unnecessary desires. In the rippleless lake of my mind, then, let me behold 
the undistorted reflection of the moon of my soul, glistening ever with the reflected light of thy presence. Om Shanti Shanti. So let's begin with the double inhaling and tensing, vibrating and drawing energy into the body. We are made of energy. So imagine that you're pulling cosmic energy into your body. You can imagine it coming in through the medulla oblongata, which is at the base of the brain. This is where our bodies begin as fetuses as they grow. This is where the life force enters the body and sustains us. So take in a deep breath and all the way out. Now double inhale intense. Low, medium, high, feeling all the muscles. Exhale, relax. Feeling inwardly. Inhale intense. Low, medium, high, vibrating with energy, drawing in energy through the medulla. Exhale, relax. Feeling, relaxing, dissolving. Inhale, intense. Low, medium, high, just a bit higher, vibrating with energy. Exhale, relax. Feel. And now let's do a few rounds of measured breathing where we'll inhale to a count of eight, hold to a count of eight, and then exhale to a count of eight. So take a deep breath in and all the way out. Inhaling slowly, inhale. Inhale, hold, exhale, inhale, hold, exhale. Inhale, hold, exhale, last round, inhale, hold, and exhale, breathing normally. sensation of the breath in the nostrils. Or if you feel it a bit higher, feel it wherever you feel it in the nose. Not controlling the breath. Simply letting it come and go naturally, just like waves on a seashore, as you sit and observe them coming and going, relaxing. the 
conscious awareness that is dreaming. You're not the body, you're not the dream. Put this awareness on the breath, feeling the sensation of the inhale, a bit cool, and with sensitivity, feel the exhale a bit warm. Feel that you are breathing in and out through this point, watching the breath as the awareness. Ramdas tells us that awareness is a little like a flashlight shines on this or on that, never shines on itself. Shine this light of awareness and the sensation of the breath. As you become more and more relaxed, feel the sensation moving upwards one more time, just slightly now, to the third eye, the point between the eyebrows. Feel the breath now coming and going from this point, feeling the inhalation is a cool sensation and the exhalation as a warm sensation. Gaze uplifted to this point. Zooming in to this feeling of the breath at this point between the eyebrows, the spiritual eye. seed of superconscious awareness. chanting home on the inhalation and saw on the exhalation. Gaze uplifted to the point between the eyebrows, feeling the breath coming and going from this point.
can also add the right index finger, curling it toward you on the inhalation and away from you on the exhalation. As your palms are upturned, the torso, the junction of the legs and the torso. And as you notice the breath, feel your back rising. You feel your head like it's being pulled up by a magnet and extending the torso, extending your neck, allowing the energy to flow freely through the spine, rolling the shoulders back, opening the heart. Meditate with Hong Song now with deep concentration. practice of Hong Sa allows us to attune to a divine state of calmness, this calmness is always available to us, we can practice attuning ourselves to this calmness. can practice becoming calm in meditation and with practice eventually we can learn if we remind ourselves to be calm in every moment in our life find ourselves becoming agitated return to this calmness feeling and allowing feel the breath at the point between the eyebrows Feel your mind becoming calm. Welcoming and allowing all that is. Let's come. 
concentrate now with Hong Sa for 30 seconds. Now letting go of the mantra, letting go of the focus on the breath. Letting go of the right index finger. Feeling all that you feel, allowing and welcoming. Feeling the inside of your body. You may feel a tingling in the hands, See if you can feel the inside of your hands and your fingers. And now take a deep breath in as if you're breathing in through your heart. Hold the breath, feeling the energy in the heart center. Feeling that energy coming from your hands, moving up through your arms, gathering in the heart, all of the energy inside moving inward, and now move that energy upwards from the heart, up through your throat, up to the medulla, the base of the brain curving toward the spiritual eye, gazing out from that point, three exhales, relaxing and feeling. Gaze uplifted at the point between the eyebrows. Looking into the infinite, feel that there is a million miles of space in front of you. Feel that there is a million miles of space behind you. A million miles of space to your left. A million miles of space to your right. A million miles of space below you. A million miles of space above. Now with the gaze uplifted at the point between the eyebrows, Yogananda says this point is like a mental microphone or a spiritual broadcasting station. This allows us to communicate with the infinite, with our higher self, with the dreamer, with the energy that is the Divine Mother. You may have heard that man was created in God's image. In this way, we can relate to God in a familial way as a Divine Mother, Mother Earth, the World Mother, the Heavenly Father, Consciousness, the Dreamer, the Architect of the Dream. We can become like children. We can also think of God as our dearest friend who only wants to help us to become lucid in this dream, present and awake, and realize that we are not these limited small bodies, that we are infinite, eternal, expanded beings, and that all that exists is ours. You've only forgotten. 
Feel God in whatever way feels natural to you. And with your gaze uplifted at the point between the eyebrows, mentally call out from that point, reveal thyself, reveal thyself. You've just become awake in the dream and you are calling out, reveal thyself, reveal thyself, knowing that you will receive an answer. If you are undistracted, and determined, calling out longingly. You are a soul that is shipwrecked on this little body. Call out with a yearning that, with the mental microphone. Reveal thyself. Reveal thyself. center. Now begin to feel this energy in the heart, however you feel it. Allow it to be there. Welcome it. This is the communication from the divine. Begin to notice a feeling of peace in your heart. Perhaps now you may notice the sense of peace in the room that you're in. Notice now just how much more here you are than when you began this meditation. Feel this sense of peace expanding and growing in the heart center. Feel it filling your body with rippling, peaceful energy, a peace that passes all understanding, feeling this peaceful energy grow and filling your body, feeling it coming back and filling the heart and then feel that energy gathering there and moving upwards, up through your throat, up through the medulla, curving slightly to the spiritual eye. Gaze uplifted at that point. With gratitude and with love in your heart. Call out from that point. Reveal thyself. Reveal thyself. Call out as the spirit, contacting spirit. The soul communicating with the source. Coming as a child. Now, feel in your heart opening, expanding, 
tuning your heart to ecstasy as a receiver. Begin to feel a reception, flow of energy beginning to fill the heart. Notice this energy as a feeling of calmness. Calmness differs from peace in that it is dynamic. That we can choose to become calm at any moment in our life. Here in this peaceful setting, feel this calmness, attune to it. No matter what is going on in the world around us, this state of calmness is available. It is our superpower that we can unlock as spiritual beings. With will, enter this state of calmness, feeling and allowing all that is to be. No longer needing to reform the world to make it how we want Choosing to allow all that is expanding and feeling this calm vibration, this calm sensation begin to grow and ripple and fill every cell of our body with calmness, healing us. Yogananda tells us that calmness is invincibility that with calmness we can stand unshaken amidst the crash of breaking worlds. So feeling this calm energy flowing, rippling, feeling all that is. Let it gather once again in the heart. Feeling that energy there, feel it move upwards up through your throat, lengthening your spine, feeling your head being pulled up by a magnet and feeling this energy go up through your throat, up to the medulla, curving to the spiritual eye. Gazing into the infinite through that point. and love in your heart, call out from that point, reveal thyself, reveal thyself. I calling out, reveal thyself with love in your heart. Love is a feeling, goes beyond language. And we offer our love and we feel that we receive this love in our heart. We complete the circuit thereby creating a magnetic field which in turn draws God's love to us in greater and greater magnitude. We become a greater and greater channel for this love. beyond in 
intellectual ideas of love. Connecting and sending and receiving love is why we were created. It is why God separated himself into countless souls so that we would go through life with all of its pleasures and pains, sadness, and happiness, and that we would eventually come to the point now that we realize and we choose that this love is greater and more desirable than any of these material gifts, any material pleasures that fade away when the body dies. They don't last and they never bring us true lasting joy. But this connection of sending love and receiving love is eternal and lasting, is always available to us and it is our true nature to feel this love energy now transforming, feeling a smile spreading across your heart, feeling a smile spreading across your throat, and feeling a smile spreading across your mouth, feeling a smile spreading across your brow. Feel this blissful vibration sensation now, filling every fiber of your being. So call to mind now anyone you know, or perhaps 
multiple people, any loved ones in need of healing energy. Time and space are illusions and we are made of energy connected by the ether. Call to mind anyone you know in need of healing energy, maybe physical, spiritual, mental. See them bathed in white light. See their bodies filled with white light. See them becoming free from suffering. Say their names now mentally. from our heart and out through our hands and we can visualize this white light energy spreading and covering the planet, repairing and healing everything that it touches. All those with receptive hearts I will receive this healing energy and we will enter into a world that is more conscious, more loving, more peaceful. So with the hands together in front of the heart, Let's repeat this prayer out loud and then we'll rub our hands together, create a warm energy, put the hands up and then we'll send this healing energy out into the world and feel it spreading as far as you can take it. And imagine it filling the room that you're in, the, the building, the neighborhood, the city, the state, the country, the moving throughout the world and covering the continents and the entire globe. So with the hands together in front of the heart, take in a deep breath, then exhale. Repeat after me. Divine Mother, Divine Mother thou, art omnipresent. thou art omnipresent. Thou art in all thy children. Thou art in all thy children. Manifest thy healing presence. Manifest thy healing presence. In all bodies. In all bodies. Minds. Minds. And souls. And souls. Rubbing the hands together. We'll be sending this energy out. Taking in a deep breath. Hands up. this session, I'd like to read a passage from the Hindu scripture known as the Kata Upanishad. The more that I recite this passage, the more that I attune to it, the more it gives and the more lessons it teaches. This is a story of a boy named Nachiketa who purposefully travels to the land of death to meet Yama, the king of death, 
to learn the secrets to overcome death and this passage is Yama's blessing, his gift, his boon to Nachiketa, teaching him how to overcome death, to listen and follow along and absorb this esoteric teaching without trying to intellectualize it, but simply feeling the words. In the secret cave of the heart, two are seated by life's fountain. The separate ego drinks of the sweet and bitter stuff, liking the sweet and disliking the bitter, while the supreme self drinks sweet and bitter, neither liking this nor disliking that. The ego gropes in darkness, while the self lives in light. So declare the illumined sages and the householders who worship the sacred fire in the name of the Lord. May we light the fire of Nachiketa that burns out the ego and enables us to pass from fearful fragmentation to fearless fullness in the changeless whole. Know the self as Lord of the chariot, the body as the chariot itself, the discriminating intellect as charioteer, and the mind as rain. The senses, say the wise, are the horses, and selfish desires are the roads they travel. When the self is confused with the body, mind, and senses, they point out, it seems to enjoy pleasure and suffer sorrow. When a person lacks discrimination and his mind is undisciplined, his senses run hither and thither like wild horses. But they obey the rain like trained horses. When a person has discrimination and the mind is one pointed, those who lack discrimination, with little control over their thoughts, and far from pure, reach not the pure state of immortality, but wander from death to death. While those who have discrimination, with a still mind and a pure heart, reach journey's end, never again to fall into the jaws of death. With a discriminating intellect as charioteer and a well-trained mind as reins, they attain the supreme goal of life, to be united with the Lord of love. The senses derive from objects of sense perception, sense objects from mind and mind from intellect, and intellect from ego. Ego from undifferentiated consciousness and consciousness from Brahman. Brahman is the first cause and the last refuge. Brahman, the hidden self in everyone, does not shine forth. 
He is revealed only to those who keep their minds one-pointed on the Lord of love, and thus develop a superconscious manner of knowing. Meditation empowers them to go deeper and deeper into consciousness, from the world of words to the world of thought, then beyond thoughts to wisdom in the self. Get up, wake up, seek the guidance of an illumined teacher and realize the self. Sharp like a razor's edge is the path, the sages say, difficult to traverse. The Supreme Self is beyond name and form, beyond the senses, inexhaustible, without beginning and without end, beyond time, space, and causality, eternal, immutable. Those who realize the Self are forever free from the jaws of death. The wise who gain experiential knowledge of this timeless tale of Nachiketa, narrated by death, attain the glory of living in spiritual awareness. Those who, full of devotion, recite this supreme mystery at a spiritual gathering are fit for eternal life. They are indeed fit for eternal life. Om Shanti Shanti. And that ends our time together. But if you have a moment before entering back into this world, the physical world, let's join in a round of eternal ohms where we'll chant Om and end with Amen. And as we chant OM, feel the energy within the body harmonizing and feel the world around you also harmonizing. Feel it becoming more conscious, more peaceful, more loving. And then when you enter back into the world, you'll be entering into one that matches this new vibration, this new perception that you hold within. And expect to see it a little brighter, a little more aware, more awake to the level, to the degree that you become more aware and awake as you harmonize the energy. So putting the hands together in front of the chest, taking in a deep breath.
joy to you.